In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this cute Easter Bunny egg holder out of polymer clay. So I'm going to start off by making the nest that the chocolate egg is going to sit in. I'm using aluminium foil for this and making sure that I shape that nest shape around the egg that I'm going to be using. And once I'm happy with that shape, I'm then going to be covering it with my polymer clay. I've run this clay through a pasta machine just to give me a nice even sheet. You can use just a roller to do this too. Just make sure that your clay is nice and conditioned and warm before you start to make your life a lot easier and make it perform as it should do. So once I've blended all of that through, I'm adding some extra pieces where there are some divots where the aluminium foil has been, just to make sure that that's all nice and smooth and there are no holes. Once that's done, I'm using a dentist explorer tool to add some crisscrossy lines to give the impression of twigs in a nest. As I'm not going for realistic, I'm going for the impression Make sure I do that on the outside and on the inside. To decorate the nest, I've decided that I'm going to do some little flowers, as this is for my daughter. I've done a snake of clay that I've cut small, even pieces out of. I've then balled them up, and I'm using a ball stylus to shape my petals, which I'm then going to join together. There are five petals in total for this flower. I'm just going to put them together and dab at the very centre with my ball stylus, I just want the impression of those petals. One final smaller ball just in the centre to finish the flower look. And now I'm just going to lift up the edges of those petals just to give the flower a bit more form. I'm just testing the position on my nest now as to roughly where I'm going to want it. And then I'm going to repeat the process with a few more petals. On the tinier petals, I'm using a cocktail stick instead of my ball stylus just to add the shape because it's a bit more small and fiddly and I don't have a ball stylus quite small enough. And then I'm just positioning now where I want all those flowers to be. Before I've attached the flowers to the nest, I've used some clay adhesive just to make sure that there's a nice strong connection as I'm not going to be able to blend them properly onto the form. On now with me bunny. I'm using foil again in a kind of conical shape, slightly narrower at the top, wider at the bottom to form the body. When I'm happy with that size, I'm covering it over with my polymer clay. I've run that through a pasta maker. If you don't have a pasta maker, you can just use a rolling pin. I use the pasta maker just for a nice even sheet. And then once I've done that, I've used two more conical shaped, smaller balls of aluminium foil that I've covered again with my polymer clay to make some legs. I'm now poking through the end of the legs with a cocktail stick. This isn't my brightest moment. I'm trying to make a hole in the body with the blunt end of a stick because I cut it in half. Doesn't really work very well when you've got um, foil in the middle. So use the pointy end. And once I'm happy with that and I've attached those legs, I'm then just wrapping some more clay around it to add a bit more bulk and form. And then I'm going to add on both sides some extra clay to add some hips because I want him to look like he's sitting down properly and doesn't just have random um, bits sticking out of the front of him. I do want them to look somewhat like legs. Because even though I'm going for cartoony, I want to give the impression that it could be somewhat believable. <laughs> so blending those hips in now with one of my tools and my fingers and just making sure that both those sides are symmetrical-ish. So I'm not going for exact but ish is good enough. This is for my daughter for um, her Easter present or one of her Easter presents because she's been after one of my sculptures for ages so it's a surprise for her. So just shaping in now that joint because I want it blended in, but I do want it to be defined as well. 
as a leg joint. I'm just making sure that sits nicely with my nest. And now I'm working on the feet. So I'm just using some balls of clay for the feet. Just measuring up against that body to make sure they're the right size. And then I'm going to shape it on my table just with my fingers. Just smoothing out where it needs to be. And then I'm making sure that the other side matches as well. I'm using my Explorer tool now to create the toes. Notice I'm not sort of dragging the tool, I'm pushing in to make the marks. If you drag the tool, you'll end up dragging the clay and you end up with bits all over the place and it can look quite messy. Whereas if you just press gently, repeat a few times, you'll get a much cleaner result. Now I need to attach my feet to the legs. So I'm using an awl just to add some holes. I'm using my clay adhesive there on the edges and half a cocktail stick again just to attach those feet. So clay adhesive on the feet and I'm just going to push them into place once the cocktail stick's properly stuck into the body. Okay, so I made sure that they fit and then I realised I hadn't done the soles of the feet. So I'm just going to work on them now before I properly attach. So I've rolled some balls of clay and then I flattened them down with my, um, what's it called, tissue blade? I think it's called a tissue blade. Um, just the flat end of that, just to add the pads of the feet. And then some smaller, slightly more oval balls that I'm flattening just with my fingers will make the toes. So there we go. I'll do that on both feet. And then just make sure that the toes come down far enough on the underside of the foot. And now I'm attaching. So I've just pushed the, the clay and the foot onto the body with some clay adhesive. And then I'm just blending the two together. It doesn't matter what tool you use to blend it together. Use whatever is comfortable for you. You just want to make sure that there is a nice smooth connection. I'm now just adding a circle of clay to the stomach just because I wanted a bit more detail on the body and then I decided that the hips weren't quite bulky enough and so I'm just adding a bit more shape to those legs and then blending in so that it all sits neatly. So I just keep fiddling with this and faffing with it and finessing it until I'm happy with how it looks. Once that's ready, I'm ready to add fur. I'm just using the blunt side of my Explorer tool to add the fur texture. I'm paying attention to roughly what direction the hair would be flowing. And quite slowly, this is sped up slightly, quite slowly in smooth motions, just adding the indents throughout the body to create the impression of hair. I've now added a small ball of clay that I've pinched at one end to make a triangle shape, added a fur texture to that as well, and some clay adhesive, and I'm sticking that to the bottom of the back to make his tail. And then just adding more texture where I flattened it with my fingers when pushing it on. And school by error, I forgot when I made the small armature, because I didn't use any wire, I forgot to add the neck, so I've just added a cocktail stick into where his neck's going to be and I'm creating a hole sort of between his legs with some clay adhesive and again a cocktail stick because I need to add the nest to the front of the body and I want them to adhere together. The good thing about the clay adhesive is that once this is baked in the oven that's going to stick now and I don't have to worry about blending it together um, because that would ruin the look of what I've made so I'm just using the clay adhesive to stick everything together and I'm giving him a neck now before I move on. And I've just placed that egg in there just to make sure everything was sitting as I needed it to. Because before it bakes, I want to make sure that everything's the right size because I can't really change it much afterwards. Again, schoolboy error, I forgot to add arms as well. As I was doing well on this bake, I was in a rush to try and make this model in time to get it ready for my daughter for Easter. So in my rush, I forgot to add arms too. So not a big deal. I just used an awl to add them, um, push straight through the, the um, foil and I've added a thick wire where the arms are going to be and I'm just shoring up those holes now with a bit more clay just to 
make sure everything sits as it should be. Going through and just adding some more details, defining that stomach section a bit more, pushing the hair back in place where I've pressed it out by adding extra details and having to add the arms. And again, just smushing everything together and making sure everything's sat where it should be for where those arms are going to be. And I use my fingers to bend the arms to sort of the position I'm going to need it. And then realise in a minute that that's not going to work and I get some pliers to help finish the job. Because I want this the arms of this bunny rabbit to be holding onto that egg, or at least supporting it. I want it to look like it's cradling that egg. Okay, so now I've done that, I'm moving on to the head. So I've had a ball of aluminium foil once again that I've covered in clay and I'm just making sure that sits nice and smooth and it's all blended together. And now I'm using my ball stylus to add in the eye sockets and then smoothing them out with my thumbs with even pressure to try and make sure that they stay as even as possible. And a bunny needs ears, and this time I'm remembering to add my armature. So half cocktail sticks once again, sticking out the head in the position that I'm going to want them to be for the ears when I get onto them. Now I've rolled some balls of clay that I'm pressing in for eyes, and I'm adding the bottom lid and the top lid. And then I decided I really didn't like how that was looking, so I've smushed everything together again, added more clay to the other side and smoothed that down again so I can start again. So again, with my ball stylus, I'm now making the eyes a bit further forward and a bit longer. The good thing about polymer clay is that you're not married to something. If something doesn't look how you want it to look, you can redo it, which is why I really like this medium. And now I've got the eye sockets roughly where I want them. I've decided to add his nose in. So that was just a ball of clay that I've then shaped into a sort of muzzle looking piece. And I'm adding some ovals into the eyes to make the eyeballs. That I'm then using my medium ball stylus to add the pupil and iris area. So I'm just pushing in there and then adding a top eyelid with a snake of clay that has been tapered on either end and then blending that through again with my ball stylus to hide that joint. I'm much happier with how this is looking. I'm now using my homemade rake tool just to knock down any lumps and bumps that I don't want and to help shape the bottom of that muzzle. And then I'm using my colour shapers just to blend that muzzle joint in. Another ball of clay now which I've pinched at three points to make a triangle that I've added to make the nose and again I'm using the colour shaper now just to roughly mark out where I want the mouth to sit on this rabbit. So using it to blend that nose in properly and add the impression of roughly where I want those nostrils to and just smoothing that whole area. I'm now Gently digging in where I want the mouth to be, so just defining that shape a bit more. And then once I've done that, I'm just finessing the shape and then I'm going to add some teeth. So I've made a small snake of clay and cut that in half with the blunted ends, attached that to the front of the muzzle. And now I'm just using my tools to give the impression of teeth and to make sure that it's properly blended into the position that I want it to be. And adding a few lines to give the texture that the teeth need. I wasn't happy with the shape of the muzzle at this point, so I'm just adding a bit more clay to the very front, just because I wanted a bit more de definition to the shape there, and I wanted to give him a lower lip as well. So another stake of clay just underneath that, that I'm then blending in A bit more bulk being added to that mus muzzle. So that's a good thing about clay is you can keep on adding shapes until you're happy. And now I wanted him to have a nice wrinkly part at the top of his nose, so another snake of clay for that. 
Onto the ears now, I'm using a fine mesh gauze to make the body of them. I've cut them into the shape and the size I want the ear to be, and that's going to be my armature. I've then used a sheet of clay that I'm cutting around the shape, and then a slightly smaller sheet over the top of that. And I'm just going to blend all that in to keep the mesh inside. And then using a snake of clay around the outside edge to give the impression of the outer ear. And I'm making sure that, that everything on all the edges are all smooth and blended in well. And defining around the inside of that ear a bit more. And then some bacon bond and a cocktail stick. I'm shaping the ear and I was working out roughly where I wanted it and how I wanted it to go. I've decided that just shoving the ear on wasn't the best way to do it. So a small snake of clay around the bottom of the ears to add a base and then I'm wrapping the ear around that and then blending the ear into that snake of clay. A small sheet of clay just on the very bottom just to make sure that the cocktail stick stays covered. So the cocktail sticks are supporting these ears and then the gauze is adding the more support throughout the top without adding the bulk and the good thing about the gauze is that I can then shape the ear and it's got some support um, for when it's baked. So it's strong but thin so I, I really liked doing the ears with this even though they were a little bit fiddly. But once I worked it out, they both went quite quickly. And then once they're both on, I can just refine the shape that I want a bit more, bend the ears as I want them, because I didn't want them to just to stick out. I wanted them to have a bit of shape to them. And now it's on to adding the fur texture to the face, the same as I did to the body. Just small lines, sort of flicking lines, in the um, directions that the fur would be growing. So on the back of the ears, on the front of the ears, anywhere that I wanted fur, all around the head. And then some clay adhesive, and I can pop that onto my body. Make sure he's looking where I want him to look, and then I'm adding um, some more clay around his neck to help blend in and add that neck shape. I then realised I hadn't given him pupils, so a tiny weeny snake of clay there that I've then cut a small chunk off of and I'm using my tool just to place them in the eye with a bit of clay adhesive and that will give the highlight to my eyes as the way I've done them. So that's been in and been baked and now it's time to come back and to do the arms. So large snakes of clay that are sort of tapered at one end and I'm cutting them not all the way through, sort of about halfway through, so that I can then easily attach them to my wire. Um, I've covered the wire with clay adhesive as well to help them bond that bit better. And then I'm cutting it down to size so that I've got space to add my hands. So the egg's gone back into the basket now, so to make sure that the wire's at the right shape and size and that I can get my hands to the right size. I've used two balls of clay that are the same size and made sure that they match. And now I'm adding the fingers um, the same way that I'd worked on the toes. So just pressing that tool in to add a finger shape. And these I'm just adding a pad to the very, very centre. And some clay adhesive onto the end of that wire, smooshing the um, hand onto it. And... I'm shaping with a scalpel to take off the excess clay to make sure that the hands look right. So in goes my egg again. I'm making sure that everything is positioned as it needs to be. Because the worst thing I could do was go through all of this, bake it, and then the egg not fit. So once I'm happy, adding the fur texture to those arms once again. And now I've decided to add a bit more bulk to his muzzle and face. I want him to look a bit fluffier. So I've used a small amount of clay that I've shaped to the, the shape that I want it and added some fur texture and attached with bacon bond or clay adhesive. 
I'm now using a ribbon of clay that I've run through my pasta machine. I made a snake of clay and then ran that through my pasta machine and attached it around the neck for a ribbon. And then I made the bow out of camera shot for some strange reasons. So I missed that. But all that is is another ribbon of clay that I've joined the two ends in the middle of and then pinched to make that shape, which I've then stuck on. I've now used a ball of clay that I've flattened and I'm just positioning that in the middle to make the knot of the bow. And then I'm going to use my tools to add any detailing to that bow. So it's really easy to make. I'm just annoyed that I've missed it. So sorry about that. So one final check that everything is as it should be. And now that's going for its final bake. So on to the painting now. Uh, my daughter's favourite colour is blue. So I did a base coat of a blue, bluey grey. I mixed black and white and then a tiny bit of blue in with that and put that all over where the main body fur is and once I've covered it I can use the hairdryer to dry that and once that had all cooled down I've then got a darker grey that I've added more black to really really watered that down and I'm using it to, as a wash which I'll just put over the body and wipe off with my fingers and with a tissue as you can see here and that will just allow the paint to go right into all those crevices for where I've put the, the, the texture. So it will really help to define that texture. So you just wipe on the watered down paint and then wipe it off. And the, the water will allow it to go into all of those crevices. I've now made a slightly lighter grey and I've barely got any on my brush. So I've put it on my brush. I've wiped it off on tissue paper. And what's left, I'm just dusting over my model. And that's going to pick up all the high points um, of my model to define where all the hair texture is. I'm using the same colour, but a bit thicker now to use as a base colour for the tail and for the muzzle. So this is just the base coat for those sections. So I'm just making sure they're nicely covered with that paint. So I always like to start with a medium tone. I then add a dark wash to get into the dark bits and then I'll add my highlights after. That's how I tend to work. Adding that colour now to the stomach as well and a little bit to the tiny bit of fluff that I've added to the top of the muzzle. So back in now with a slightly, I've lightened it again with a bit more white. It's still grey, but it's got a bit more white added. And I'm just adding that dry brushing technique just to a few areas like the um, face, the tips of the ears, the hands and the feet. And to the tail as well. So when you're adding your highlights, don't feel like you have to add them over the whole thing everywhere. You can be selective as to where you want highlighted. And sometimes it is a case of less is more. So again, that lighter colour I'm putting over the muzzle and the stomach as well. So I didn't want too much dark in the, the, the muzzle. But I did decide that some of the lines I wanted defined. So with a small brush, I'm using a slightly darker wash on the muzzle, just in the crevices at the top of the nose and in where I've put the um, holes for the whiskers. So I'm just adding a slightly darker wash to those specific areas. And just round the mouth as well. If you do go too mad with your wash, you can always go straight back over with your highlights once again, once it's all dried. So don't feel like you've ruined anything if you've gone too dark you can just go over and lighten it up again so slightly lighter wash again not wash sorry dry brushing slightly lighter dry brush once again over the muzzle it's slightly thicker than a dry brush this because i wanted the very front of the muzzle to be quite a lot lighter than it had been but you just keep on fiddling and keep on finessing until you're happy with the result now, I was originally going to do this with my airbrush, but I've hand painted it because I wanted to show you guys how I hand paint these models. Now, because I want to do the 
ears pink and the clay I've used is quite translucent. I decided that I was going to use just a white base layer first um, to get rid of that opacity because I didn't want it to look translucent, the inside of these ears, because it is quite cartoony. Um, if I was going for more realistic, I might have just put the pink straight over the clay, but this time I just wanted a nice base layer, so I used a couple of layers of white just to act as a base. I've done that on the inside of the ears. I'm doing it now on the nose as well. Anywhere that I want the pink to be added, just a couple of layers of white. The paints that I'm using are Amsterdam standard paints. So the paints that I use to paint normal pictures as well. They are quite translucent. It works well for me because I like to work in lots of layers. But if you want something a bit thicker, then you might want to go for a different brand. But I like these because they're quite matte. And again, I like working in lots of layers. So I've mixed a very light pink, but I'm going over that white with now. Now you see how light that pink is. If I'd have just done it over the clay without anything as a base, it wouldn't have really shown up very well. And it would have taken me an awful lot of layers of that pink to build it up to where it needs to be. So that's why I've put that white down first. So just popping pink on the ears, on the nose and on the pads of the feet and hands. And just making sure I've got nice coverage there. I've then darkened that up with a tiny bit more red just to add a bit of shading in on the ears and on certain areas on the nose. So there's a bit more shading, a bit more depth where I felt there would be more shadow. And again, a bit more depth to the nose as well. So when you're painting anything, just take your time. Don't feel like you have to rush. If you feel like something's drying too quickly, just let it dry, let it cool down then and then carry on painting. That's the good thing about acrylics is that you can keep painting. So I'm on the eyes now. I'm just dropping some black into the depth of those pupils. Just getting right in there and then I'm going to go around the outside with a very light grey. I don't like to use white straight away when I'm doing eyes because eyes aren't grey. Even cut, they aren't grey, they aren't white even. <laughs> eyes aren't white, they are different colours, they've got lots of shadows in them. So I never use pure white immediately, even on cartoony things. I want these eyes to be a very light grey first and then I'll go through, I'll add a bit more shading if I need to and then I'll add the highlights and the lightness in after this base. But the initial base that I put in is always a grey. And usually it's a slightly darker grey than this that I'll use but because this is cartoony I'm not that worried. But just making sure that I've got a couple of layers there because the paint is quite translucent and then I'm adding my slightly lighter, it's still grey, it's still not white, lighter grey just through the middle bit and then dry brushing that light grey just at the top there of the nose and through the front of the face as well just to keep building up my highlights. I've now mixed a blue but it's not blue, it is blue, but I've mixed a light grey first and then added a tiny bit of blue and then added a bit more blue as I went along um, to make the eyes. So this is just the base colour of the eyes that I'm just going around the very edge and slightly inside of those holes that I made in the eyes earlier. So that's just my base coat to make the colour of the iris because I wanted him to have nice blue eyes. And then tidying up by using that same light grey around just to neaten up anywhere that I might have smudged or not quite neatly added. <laughs> and then I'm painting, this is white, on the highlights of the eyes, which are those little snakes of clay that I put in the middle of the iris. And again, very light 
stripes with a small brush just going into the iris just to add some different colours in there. So I don't think it's quite white. I think it was like a light grey. And now I'm going around with a darker blue. So I just added a little bit more black to the blue that I had been using. I think I added a bit more blue as well. So I'm just going around and outlining both of those irises. And then I'm going to go through into each eye with small lines of that colour. Again, just to add a bit more depth and a bit more interest to those eyes. And then a very light pale blue. Same again, just little lines, little dabs. Because eyes aren't just one colour, even in cartoons. So I'm just adding a little bit of interest to those eyes. Now I've mixed unbleached titanium white with a little bit of white to make the teeth or to colour the teeth in and then I'm dabbing a little bit of white that's been watered down and then dabbing it off with my fingers on the nose just to add a highlight. This is some burnt umber which has been watered down into a wash and I'm just mopping up the excess with a cotton bud there and then I'm using a very light grey to highlight those teeth. On now to the nest. This is a mixture of burnt umber and burnt sienna that I'm just using as a base coat for my nest. And once I've got that coat nice and thick, I've then darkened it up with a tiny bit of black and a bit more burnt umber. And I've made a wash to define all those lines and try to make it look more wood-like. And then a little bit of unbleached titanium white was added to that colour to lighten it up, or quite a lot of unbleached titanium white was added to lighten that up to dry brush over to really pull out all the details. Now, because I want to colour these flowers, once again, I'm going over with white as a base so that you can see the colours that I'm adding. And I'm painting all of these flowers different colours. So this one's a couple of shades of blue. So a very light blue to begin with, then I've darkened it up just to add some interest to the middle of those petals. Nothing too detailed or interesting with these flowers. I just wanted them covered and to look flower-like because they're just there for a bit of added decoration. So I'm just using two different colours on most of these petals just to make them look a bit more interesting. And then again, adding white to the centre so that my yellow will show up later. And this last flower is going to be like a yellowy orange colour. So I'm making sure that that base really is white so that the orange has something to stand out against. And then a nice bright yellow for the centre and for some added highlights to that orange flower. And a couple of white highlights on that blue one, it appears. <laughs> now, my daughter's favourite colour is blue, so I wanted to make this bow a nice and bright blue so nice couple of coats of a blue over the whole thing the bow and the ribbon and then I've darkened that color up with some black to add the some definition to the shadows and that is how I made this Easter bunny egg holder I hope you liked this video. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up. That really would help the channel. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Leave me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon. That way you'll be notified of any new content that I post. For now though, bye guys.